This, uh, this is Slice X in FL Studio, and it looks very complicated, but I have been using this for 10 years. I've made hundreds of songs, and I will tell you that you don't need to know most of the things in here. So this is going to be a very bare bones, basic tutorial teaching you how to get started with Slice X. If you want something more complicated that goes a lot more granularly into it uh go somewhere else because that's not what this is so for the purpose of this video i'm going to be showing you how to do a vocal chop with this you can use this for drums for chord loops for anything but i mainly use it for vocal chops so that's what i'm going to be showing you i have this little loop i made right here Nothing too crazy, and I just want to put a chopped up vocal into it. So there's a couple of different ways you can load a sample into here. You can either go to File right here, the thing that looks like a, a floppy disk, and you can load a sample. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. The way I usually do it is I just click on the sample. I want to use, and I detach it. Or if you have a sample in your browser, you can just drag it in. But I'm also going to be dragging it in, but just by detaching the sample I had over here. So you just click the sample you want. Don't need to believe that this is solid ground, so and then you drag it in. And FL Studio will automatically create markers for you. And if you don't like those markers, you can just delete them and you can move them wherever. But yeah, for this tutorial, I'm not going to be going over any of this because I've been using this for years and I've never used any of this at all. Except I do recommend turning off auto dump because what that is going to do is, uh, let's say you have a pattern drawn into the piano roll and you like it, but then you decide you want to move one of the markers. What's going to happen is when you move one of the markers, it's going to effectively delete everything you did in the piano roll and start from scratch like this this is what it like lines it up as default and i have lost many an idea doing that so i would turn auto dump off always so these markers are going to determine the starting points for different points in in the sample and if you go down here to this thing that looks like the the drum patterns it lines up with each one of these markers With vocal chops, I really recommend uh, taking some time to figure out where you want these markers to be before you start chopping it up, but that's up to you. And if you go to one of these markers and you right click it, you can delete it or you can rename it and do all types of things. So let's just delete all these markers. As one really helpful parameter that SliceX has is the auto slicing which is the one that shows a marker and the box cutter thing. If you right click that, you can choose between dull auto slicing, which looks like this. It usually doesn't do much. Medium auto slicing, which is what it did as default, or sharp auto slicing. And that'll just progressively get more granular as you go on. And you can also do small grid slicing, medium grid slicing, you know, depending on how you want it to do it. I usually just start with medium auto slicing and then I move these around how I like. So once you have your markers placed where you want, uh, you can go into the piano roll and you can see it has all the markers on the left side where there would usually be notes. So this is the pattern we got. Now what if you like the sound of this slice? But you want it to be higher in pitch. We well, can't just change the pitch of the whole thing or everything's going to change pitch. So there are two methods you can use to do this. One, you can create a slide note by clicking anywhere, double clicking on that note, toggling that on, which makes this a slide note. And then you can make the slide note very, very short. And you can change the pitch that way, or you can go down here to the bottom left where it says control instead of note velocity which this is set to at default you can change it to note fine pitch and then you can move these up and down um, I usually don't do that though because that uh, since it's fine pitch it's not always perfectly on tune and it can get a bit confusing 
So, uh, that's pretty much all you need to know for Slice X, except that you can also save this as a preset, so in the future, you have a vocal already chopped up and ready to go. And this video is a clip from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio, which you can find in the description of this video if you would like more basic tutorials on all things FL Studio. Have a nice day.